Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berurah share. We're holding Mishnah Berurah Chelik Aleph and Mir Sachem. We will be learning today. Daf Lamed Dalad Amid Beis. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tefillin, and we pick up today on the very bottom of Lamed Dalad Amid Aleph. Hilchas Tefillin Simen Chaf Hey. We're in the midst of the words of the Rama in Sif Yud Aleph. So we're all the way on the bottom line of the Rama Lamed Dalad Amid Aleph, middle of the line. Says the Rama. Yesh Misha Kasav. There is one who writes, La Nyach Shalyad Miyushav, that the Shalyad should be put on while sitting. Vishal Roish Mu'umad, and the Shal Roish should be put on while standing. And this is brought down by the Ramah in the name of the Ogur who quotes it from the Zayar. Says the Ramah, Ubabadinas Elu Loy Nagukain. However, in our regions we are not Noig this way. Elishtehen Mu'umad. Rather, we put on both the Shalyad and the Shalrosh while standing. So we have a machlekes over here between something that comes from a Zayar, so that's Divrei Kabbalah, where it says that there's an Indian to put on the Shalyad while sitting and then the Shalrosh while standing. But we have the Ramo Paskins and says that Bimidinois Senu, in our Medinois, that is not the Minik, and rather we put on both the Shalyad and the Shalrosh while standing. If we turn back to Lamadalad Amin Aleph and we go to no, I'm sorry, cancel that. Lamadalad Amid Bez, Mishtabura is cut mem base. Shtehen Muumad. Our minig is to put both the Shalyad and the Shal Rosh on while standing. Ayn Bamagan Avram, Khabitz Chaim tells us to take a look at the Magan Avram. Sharitzalahriya, who wants to prove the Hanukha Shalyad that the Placement of the shalyad on the arm, tihiyah miyushav, should be done while sitting, vaha bracha tihiyah ba'amida, but then the recitation of the bracha of lahaniach tefillin should be done while standing. What would that mean? What that would mean is, we know that the bracha has to be made over la siyosam. The bracha has to be made before you perform the mitzvah. So this Magad Avram would require that you take the shalyad and you put the shalyad into the proper position while you're sitting. Then you stand up before you tighten it. You didn't tighten the shalyad yet. Then you stand up, make the bracha of lahad yach tefillin, tighten it, and then do everything else and put on the shalrosh. But the, the placement on the arm before you tighten it and before you make the bracha, that should be done while you're sitting. Now, it would seem that what the Bhagavad Avram is saying is, well, we have a zayar. And the Zayar says that al pi Kabbalah, there's a reason for the Shalyad to be put on while sitting. However, we also have a halacha that we've encountered already many times, which is that berchais ha any bracha on a mitzvah, is supposed to be made while standing. So the laniach tefillin, which is a berchais ha mitzvah, has to be made while standing. So the compromise that the Bangan Avram tries to find between the Zayar and the requirement to make the bracha while you're standing is put the shalyad into position while you're sitting, then stand up, make the bracha, and tighten it. Let's go weiter in the Mishtabura, second line down, end of the line. Aval however, be'el yorabba b'shem rashal b'tshuva simen tzadik ches kasav, demi lanu gada me'rash mikinon. Who do we have greater than the rash mikinon, who was a great bal kabbalah, and yet, Achar Shalom Ad Kabbalah, after all of his learning and all of his delving into the world of Nistar, into Kabbalah, ben he then would go ahead and be mispalal kitinoik ben yoimoy. What does that mean? Well, we know that in, in our davening, there are layers and layers and layers of complexity. And there are layers and layers and layers of Nistar. Let's take a simple tefillah that we say all the time. Baruch Sha'amar, right? Where did Baruch Sha'amar come from? It said that Baruch Sha'amar came down in a ksav from Shamayim, right? Now the words could be read and translated very simple. Baruch Sha'amar v'hayayolam gebenched is the Rabbeinu Shalaylam who spoke and created a world. He spoke, Baruch Sha'amar, he spoke, v'hayayolam, and then the world was. The world came into existence. Okay, you could touch the words of Bar Shammar very simply, but when you realize and reflect upon the fact that Bar Shammar came from Shamayim, 
you realize the layers and layers of layers of complexity that lie in the words of Bar Amar and the nistar that exists between the lines of Bar Amar. Shemayin Esrei. Shemayin Esrei was written by Anche Knesset Zagdola. It wasn't written by some poet. It wasn't written by somebody gifted with writing lyrics. It was written by Anche Knesset Zagdola. Wrote wrote the brachas of Shemayin Esrei. So you can imagine those words were not just selected for the simple taich of the words. Who knows what the tzir of ha'osiyos, these combinations of letters that form these words, who knows what these tefillas do in the olam hanistar that we don't even begin to understand. What the Chavetz Chaim is bringing down over here is that the Rash Mikinon, who learned Kabbalah, and delved into the world of Nistar and understood the world of Nistar, yet, Acher Shalom Ad Kabbalah, after all of his learning of Kabbalah, Hayim Espal Kitinot Ben Yomai. When he sat down to Davin, he didn't have these deep esoteric Kavanos in mind. Instead, he davened like a Tinot Ben Yomai. He davened like a simple child, just the translations of the words. Why? Because says the Chavetz Chaim, the Misha la Yocha la Hasik Soida al Nochain, because somebody who's not equipped to really, really, really understand the Divre Kabbalah al Nochain properly, Yavoy le Katzeitz Benetiois can come to reap amongst the thorns. Le Katzeitz Benetiois. This is a uh, poetic, I guess you would say, way of saying that he could be Yitzel Tarbus Ra, he could go out to Kefira. And indeed, we find this in the Gemara. The Gemara talks about Acher, Elisha ben Avuya, who was the Rebbe of Rameir. And the Gemara tells us that Arba Nichnes Lepardes, there were four great Tanoim, amongst them Rabbi Akiva, who they uttered a shame, Hamafirash, and they went up to Shemayim. And in it, when we say that they went up to Shemayim, precisely the world that they entered is called by Chazal the Pardes, the garden. And the Gemara tells us that four were Nichnas, and only one of them came out fully healthy, only Rabbi Akiva. The rest of them were all harmed by the experience to various degrees. The worst one was Elisha ben Avuya, who we know in the Gemara as Acher. What happened to him? The Gemara says he was Koitzeitz ben Etiyos. Since the Gemara says that they went up to a garden, that's the way the Gemara refers to the area of Shamayim that they went up to. Well, what do you do in a garden? In a garden, you harvest flowers, you harvest vegetables. So the Gemara says that he was Nichnes Lepardes, but he was Koitzeitz Benetios. He harvested the thorns. What does that mean? It means that he saw things in Shamayim that he could not reconcile. As great as he was, he lacked the ability to reconcile certain things in the Olam Aruchni that he saw up in Shemayim, and that led him astray, that led him to Kfira. He saw things in Shemayim that convinced him that there might be Shtei Rishuya is Chasvachalila, that there might be more than one divine authority, so to speak. And we know it's not that way. Hashem Aleikeinu, Hashem Echod. So Acher was led astray, and it was Koitzei Tzpenetiyos. So too over here, says the Chavetz Chaim, as much as the Rash Mikinoin understood Kabbalah, when it came time to Davin, he put aside the Kabbalah and he davened like a Tinek ben Yoimai. Why? It's very dangerous to fool around with Divrei Kabbalah. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. al Therefore, says the Chavetz Chaim, we should not grab hold of the Zayar, which is based on different Kabbalah that we do not truly understand, and go ahead and put on the Shalyad while we're sitting, and then get up to make the Bracha Ba'amida, like the Mangan Avram suggests. Rather, we should do everything Ba'amida. And in the Bir Agra, the Gra proves, even according to the Zayar, you're permitted to put on the Shalyad uh, Ba'amida, so therefore the best thing to do would be to do everything Ba'amida. Al-Kain, therefore, says the Chavetz Chaim, 
Ein lozos me haminog. We should not turn aside from the accepted minig, which is to do both the shalyad and the shalroish while standing. Now we have over here several lines of the rules of psak. How do we handle divrei kabbalah when it comes to psak halacha? There's uh, something in here that I'm not 100% sure about, so I'll point it out to you and I will try to clarify it in the future. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Kosav HaKnesses HaGdoilo. The Knesset Sagdoila writes, Beklale Apaiskim, when it comes to the rules of Psak Halacha. Kol Davar Shebale Akabala Vahazoyar Cholkin Im Hagamara Vahapaiskim. Whenever you find a Machlekis, a difference of opinion between the Bale Kabbalah, like the Zoyar, and what we have brought down in the Gemara, in Shas and Paiskim, Heilech Achar Agamara Vahapaiskim, the Psak goes according to what we have. In Shas and Paiskim. So we have a stira between a Zayar. The Zayar says one thing, Lahalacha, and in Shas and Paiskim it says otherwise. We follow Shas and Paiskim. Miu, however, in Balik Kabbalah Machmirin, if the Balik Kabbalah take a stringent position, Yesh Lachmir Gamkein, there's room to be Machmir. So what is, what's he saying here? He's saying that if there is something brought down in Shas and Paiskim, and you find that the Zayar or the other the, the other sources in Kabbalah say that you should be machmir. So says the Chavetz Chaim Leish, but Yesh lahachmir gamke. Vim loy huzkar bagamar uva paiskim. If either he means over here, if the topic is not mentioned in Shasid paiskim, or the chumra is not mentioned in Shasid paiskim, alpha pisha nizkar bekabbalah. Even though it's mentioned in Sifrei Kabbalah. We cannot compel people to follow the Chumra that's brought down in Kabbalah. If something is brought down in different Kabbalah, and we don't find that in Shas and Paiskim it says Fakert, that it says the opposite, then you should follow different Kabbalah. And so too, if we find a machlekes between our paiskim, and we find that the divrei kabbalah um, ventures an opinion, so then divrei kabbalah yachria. So then we should use the divrei kabbalah to rule. So in other words, if it's shas and paiskim, you have a machlekes, and it doesn't give us a psak halacha, and in divrei kabbalah there is a psak halacha on the matter. So then follow the psak of divrei kabbalah. Now I told you I'm confused about something. So let's quickly just break down what we just said in these last several lines. The first thing it says over here is, when you have a machloikis between divrei Kabbalah and Shas and Paiskim. So that means that there's a question in Halacha. Let's say, let's give, for example, the topic that we just, just discussed now. And I'm saying it in a theoretical way. Let's say in Shas and Paiskim it said that you have to put on Tfilin Ba'amida. And in Divrei Kabbalah, it said that you should put on the Shalyad be Yeshiva. So now that would mean that you have a Machloikis between Shas and Paiskim and a Zayar. Zayar is Zayar is Divrei Kabbalah. So if that would be the case, I'm not saying that that is the case. No, Mishnah Brewer didn't say that. The Mishnah Brewer said it's it's brought down, uh, the Ramah brought down from the Zayar that we should we should put on the Shalyad be Yeshiva. But he didn't bring down from Shas and Paiskim that it should be Ba'amida. But let's say it was that way. Let's say in Shas and Paiskim, it said, put on the Shalyad Ba'amida. And in Divrei Kabbalah, in the Zayar, it says, put on the Shalyad Yeshiva. So that's a direct Machlokes between Shas and Paiskim and Kabbalah. In that case, says the Knesset Sagdala, you follow Shas and Paiskim. So that's the first thing that the Mishnah says here. Let's read it inside. Kosav HaKnesset Sagdala Bechlalei Paiskim. If there's a machloikis between Shas and Paiskim and, and, and Kabbalah, we follow Shas and Paiskim. We don't follow different Kabbalah. Machloikis between the two, we side with Shas and Paiskim. That's rule number one. Next. Mihu, imbali Kabbalah machmirin, yeishlach regamke. Okay. Sounds like. There's a halacha that's discussed in Shas and Paiskim. And there's a Chumrah position 
and a cooler position. Maybe even in Shasid Paiskim, it says that you could be Mekel. But then in different Kabbalah, it says you should be Machmer. So says the Chavetz Chaim, Yesh Lachmer Gamkein. You should be Machmer like different Kabbalah. Next. V'im loy huskar ba'gamaru ba'paiskim. If something is not mentioned in Shas and Paiskim, Alpha Pisha Nisker Bekabala, even though it's mentioned in Kabbalah, ain't on you on you chilum lachov linoikach. We can't force people to be noyig that way. What does the Mishnah mean here? I have two possible ways of understanding this. A simple reading of these lines from the word mihu until where I just read to, from mihu until. A simple reading would be if there's an issue that's not discussed in Shas and Paiskim. It's just not discussed in Shas and Paiskim. But it is discussed in Dere Kabbalah. So Dere Kabbalah says you should be knowing a certain way. There's a certain thing you should do. It's not discussed in Shas and Paiskim at all. Says the Mishnah Rura, we can't force people to follow what it says in Divrei Kabbalah. If it's not discussed in Shas and Paiskim, we can't force people to follow Divrei Kabbalah. But then, how do you understand the next entry of the Mishnah The next entry of the Mishnah is, V'din she'en muskar b'hipach b'shas and Paiskim, a halacha that does not say the opposite of Divrei Kabbalah in Shas and Paiskim, yesh leilich acher Divrei Kabbalah. You should follow Divrei Kabbalah. Well, if it's if the issue is not discussed at all in Shas and Paiskim, then it definitely doesn't say the opposite in Shas and Paiskim. And in that case, he says you should follow Divrei Kabbalah. So what did he mean before? So I'm tempted to say that the way you have to read this is like this. First, the Mishnah Brewer said, straight on machlekes between Shas and Paiskim and Divrei Kabbalah, you follow Divrei Kabbalah. If, I'm sorry, straight on machlaikis between Shas and Paiskim and Divrei Kabbalah, you follow Shas and Paiskim. Okay. If Divrei Kabbalah is machmir, so let's say there's a machlaikis in, 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 in Shas and Paiskim. Shas brings down a machlaikis. The Paiskim brings down a machlaikis. And there's a more cooler decomposition than there's a more humor decomposition. And in Shas and Paiskim, it seems to Paskin like the cooler, but Kabbalah Paskins like the humra. You should follow the Chumrah. Even though we said when there's a Machlaikis between Divrei Kabbalah and Shas and Paiskim, we really Paskin like Shas and Paiskim. But if Divrei Kabbalah being a Machmir, be a Machmir like Divrei Kabbalah. Then the Mishnah Berurah says, V'im loy chuzkar bagamaru ba'paiskim. I think maybe he means like this. If the Chumrah is not mentioned in Shas and Paiskim at all, so the issue is discussed. The halachic issue is discussed in Shas and Paiskim. But this Chumrah is not brought down in Shas and Paiskim at all. But it is brought down by Kabbalah. So the first case was, in Shas and Paiskim you have a Machlechus. You have a Kula position, a Chumrah position. Shas and Paiskim seems to Paskim like the Kula. Kabbalah Paskim is like the Chumrah. Says the Mishnah Bura, you follow the Chumrah. You follow the Chumrah of Kabbalah. The next one is, there's an issue discussed in Shas and Paiskim, but there's a Chumra Dika position that's not brought down in Shas and Paiskim at all. But on the same issue in Divrei Kabbalah, there is a Chumra Dika position brought down. So now it's not Pshat that Divrei Kabbalah is siding like the Chumra brought down in Shas and Paiskim. No, this Chumra is not brought down in Shas and Paiskim at all. The issue is brought down in Shas and Paiskim, but the Chumrah is not brought down in Shas and Paiskim. In that case, it's only the Chumrah brought down in Divrei Kabbalah. If it's only a Chumrah brought down in Divrei Kabbalah, we can't force people to go follow it. Then the last entry of the Mishnah is, V'din she'en muska behipach b'shas, u'paiskim, something that's maybe not discussed in Shas and Paiskim at all, yesh leilach acher Divrei Kabbalah, v'gam b'makam she'esh plukt ben ha'paiskim Divrei Kabbalah yachriah, and if there's a, a machlaikis in Shas and Paiskim, Divrei Kabbalah takes a side, Divrei Kabbalah is machriya. Okay, a little confusing, but there's that. Now we go to Sif Yud Beis. Top line, end of the line in the Shulchan Aruch. Im tefillin kama pa'amim b'yoyim. If somebody puts on tefillin several times throughout the day, okay, 
Tzarech Levarech Aleh Bechol Pam. He has to make a new bracha each time he puts on tefillin. Every time he puts on tefillin, he's being mekayim, a new mitzvah. So every time he puts on tefillin, he has to make a new bracha. Now, taken at face value, this seems to be a very simplistic psaq. You put on tefillin by Shachris. At the end of Shachris, you took off your tefillin. You wrap them up. You put them away. Mincha time, for some reason, you decided to have any mincha tefillin. So you took out your tefillin to put on your tefillin. You make another bracha. All right. There doesn't seem to be any reason that that's a chiddish. Sounds very simplistic. Let's take a look at the Mishnah Brewer, though. Says the Mishnah Brewer, he's cutting mem gimel b'chal pam. Each time you put on the tefillin, you have to make another bracha. Ah, now the Mishnah Brewer tells me what the chiddish over here is. Says the Chavetz Chaim, this halacha that the Mechaber says, the Mechaber holds this way, afilu im kishesilkan hayodaitoy lachziram tekef. Says the Mishnah Brewer, you know what the chumrah you know what the Chiddush of the Mechaber is? What the Mechaber is saying is, let's say you put on tefillin by Shachris. And when you went to take the tefillin off, you had das, you had intent. Even though I'm taking the tefillin off now, I'm going to put them back on in five minutes. I have to step outside to make a phone call. I don't want to make the phone call while I'm wearing my tefillin. So I'm going to take the tefillin off, I'm going to step out of the Beis HaMedrish, I'm going to make my phone call, but I'm coming right back in afterwards. I'm putting the tefillin back on. So when you took them off, you had das that you're putting them right back on. Still and all holds the mechaber. Once you took them off, when you put them on, the next time you have to make a new brach. Why? Because when you took the tefillin off, that mitzvah is over. You made a brach on tefillin. You put on your tefillin. You were mekayim the mitzvah. When you took off the tefillin, you stopped being mekayim the mitzvah. Now that mitzvah is ozlele, it's gone. Now you want to put on tefillin again, you got to make a new bracha. You had intent when you took off the tefillin that you're going to put them right back on, so what? Very nice you had intent. The bottom line is you took the tefillin off. Once you took the tefillin off, you're not being mekayim the mitzvah anymore. If you're not being mekayim the mitzvah anymore, then the bracha is over. So now you have to make a new bracha when you want to put them back on. That's the shita of the mechaber. And says the Chavetz Chaim further over here, and I cut Mem Gimel, this is true. This has nothing to do with Shinu Makayim. You didn't leave the building. You didn't, this is not a Shinu Makayim issue. This is very, very simple. You, were, you, were, you made a brach on tefillin. You put on tefillin. The entire time that you're wearing the tefillin, you're being Makayim the mitzvah of tefillin. Now you took the tefillin off. When you took the tefillin off, you stopped being Makayim the mitzvah of tefillin. Okay, so then that mitzvah is over. That mitzvah ended. You want to start being mekayim the mitzvah again, you have to make a new bracha. The fact that you had kavana when you took the tefillin off, that you're going to put them back on again, whoop de do. That doesn't do anything for us, according to the mechaber. You want to start being mekayim the mitzvah again, you got to make a new bracha. However, continues the Chavetz Chaim here, nice cut mem gimel, and he says, But very shortly, the Ramah is going to take issue with this mechaber, and he's going to disagree with this mechaber. And he's going to say, no. If when you took off your tefillin, you had intent to put them back on again, then when you put them back on again, you do not have to make another bracha. Why? Because we learned this earlier in Sibyl Ches. The same machloikis took place in Hilchas Tzitzitz. And what the Ramah holds is that when you take off tzitzitz or you take off tefillin with the intent to put them right back on, it's as if you never took them off. Since you were never Messiah Das, since you always had in mind that I'm putting the tefillin right back on, halachically it's as if you never took them off and the mitzvah is still open. The mitzvah is kind of still rolling. Are you being mekayim the mitzvah while you're not wearing the tefillin? No. But you didn't leave the mitzvah yet and the mitzvah didn't leave you yet because you know you're about to put them right back on. And therefore the bracha is still viable and when you put them back on, you do not have to make another bracha. But in any case, right now we're in the Shita Samachaber. The Shita Samachaber is that you do have to make a new bracha. However, continues the Chavetz Chaim and he says, there's a caveat to this. V'im b'shaz bracha ha'yadaito yisha'achakach yisalkem v'yachzor v'yanichem. However, let's say what happened is when you made the bracha on the tefillin, you knew and you had in mind I'm making a bracha now on the tefillin. I'm going to put on the tefillin. At 11 o'clock, I'm going to take off the tefillin for five minutes, and then I'm going to put them on again. So now, you see the difference between the two cases? In the first case, 
You made a bracha to put on tefillin. You had nothing special in mind. You made a bracha, you put on tefillin. At 11 o'clock, something happened. You had to take your tefillin off. When you took them off, you had in mind that you're going to put them back on. Says the Mechaber, you have to make a new bracha because the mitzvah is over. The Ramah says, no, you don't have to make a new bracha. Why? Because since when you took the tefillin off, you had in mind you're going to put them right back on, it's as if you never took them off. Now we're addressing a slightly different case. When I made the bracha on the tefillin, I knew that I'm going to have to take them off and I'm going to put them right back on. In that case, in that case, even the Mechaber would agree that you don't have to make a new bracha. If when you made the original bracha, you had das, that at some point I'm going to take the tefillin off and I'm going to put them right back on again, then it's covered by the original bracha and you don't have to make a new bracha when you put them back on. Okay, let's go right to here in the Mechaber. So the Mechaber said first, a more simple, a more basic halacha. You, you were wearing your tefillin, you went and you took your tefillin off, and now you're putting them back on. The Mechaber says you have to make a new bracha. Mishnah Bura said that's true, even if when you took them off you had a mind that you're going to put them right back on again. Now, says the Mechaber near the end of the second line, Nishbitu mimikaimam. Let's say you're wearing your tefillin, and they got knocked out of place. So you're wearing your tefillin, and your, your shalyad got loose, and it fell all the way down to your elbow. So now your shalyad is no longer located in a place on the arm where you could be late to the mitzvah. So essentially, your shalyad is now off. So you made a bracha, you put on your tefillin, you put on your shalyad, you put on your shalrash. Now, essentially speaking, what happened is the shalyad fell off. Do you have to make a new bracha? Says the Mechaber, Nishvetu Mimekaimam. If the tefillin got knocked out of place, so they fell off of their place, and you go work with them to put them back where they belong, Tzarek Lavarech, you have to make a new bracha. Says the Mishnah Burais, Kat Memdal Nishvetu, Kasav Shla, Haidalai Nehigi Haidna Lavarech, Kishin Nishvetu Mimekaimam. The Shla says that nowadays we don't seem to be naive this way. Nowadays, even if the tefillin get knocked out of place when we put them on, we don't make a bracha. Says the Lavush, why is that? Very interesting svar. He says, Mishum de Bishas Tfila. If this happens in the middle of davening, Mistama Enoi Mesiach Das Mehem, Vevik Cholzan Amanas Lach Ziron, the Pasaka Agab Samach Tein Lach Sir Lavarich. The Lavush says a fascinating svar. We said we have this Machloikis the Mechaber and the Ramah. The Mechaber says, if you took your tefillin off, even if you had das to put them right back on, you still have to make a, a new bracha. The Ramah says, no. If when you took the tefillin off, you had das, you're going to put them right back on, you do not have to make a new bracha. It's as if you never took them off. Now we have this question of nishbitu mimekaimam. The tefillin fell off of their place, and now you want to put it back on. The Mechaber says, you have to make a new bracha. Says the Lavush, we don't find that the minig is that way. We find that the Lavush is that you do, the find that the minig is that you do not make a new bracha. Explains the Lavush, I'll tell you why. Because if this happens by davening, and 99% of the time that we wear our tefillin nowadays is by davening, says the Lavush, if this happens by davening, the fact that your tefillin got knocked out of their place in the middle of davening makes it as if you took off your tefillin with das to put them back on. Why? Because throughout davening, your das is to have your tefillin on. So if your tefillin fell off of their proper place in the middle of davening, that's as if you took off your tefillin with das to put them back on. Because certainly in the middle of davening, your das is that if the tefillin fall off, you're going to put them back on. And there are more paskins that if you take off your, tzit, your talus, you take off your tefillin with das to put them right back on, you do not make another bracha. And we paskin like the Ramah. And that's why we're not knowing to make a new bracha if the tefillin fall off their place in middle of davening. How about if it's not middle of davening? Let's see. Vim Cain, says the Mishnah based on this, Oisan shehochim lepa'amim at chatzais betfillin, People who have the minute that they wear their tefillin to the afternoon, even after davening, so now it's not middle of davening anymore. Then, im nishpatu roi Then, according to this lavush, 
if your tefillin fell off of their proper place, when it's not middle of davening, you do have to make a new bracha, even according to the Ramah. Because now it's not called that you have das to put them right back on again. That automatic das is only in the middle of davening. The Chayyadim Kasev, the Chayyadim writes, the Af Peshas He disagrees with this Lavush. He says even in the middle of davening, im Nishpetu, if the if the Tfilin get moved off of their proper place, Hamevarich Loi Hifsid. Somebody who makes a bracha before he puts them back in their place, Loi Hifsid. Ubi Kamakim. Nevertheless, Nira the Lamaid Bebrachis Adif. The Chavetz Chaim sides with the notion that it is better to be Memayit in brachas. Don't make extra brachas. Because we're always worried that somebody will not really have kavana when he makes the bracha, in which case it would be a bracha lavatala. Ice cotton mem hay. The mechaber is talking about a case nishmetu mimet kaimam, where the tefillin came off of their place. What does that mean? Says the chavetz chaim dafka kulan oiruban. When we say that the tefillin came off of their proper place on the arm or on their head, it means either roiv of the bias or the entire bias. But if it just slipped a little bit off of its place, even though you are required to put it back, you certainly do not have to make a new bracha. In any case, the Bechaber Paskin over here, no, we're not up to that yet. Okay, says the Ramah, third line down, middle of the line. Haga, let's say only one of the Tfilin got knocked off of its proper place. The Sharoish or the Shalyad says the Ramav, you're putting back one of them, you would make the same bracha as you would make if you're only putting on one of the Tfilin. And we'll, dis- describe, we'll discuss that uh, in Sibyl Chavav in greater detail. Says the Mechaber Vaiter, Hizizam mimekaymam adaito lachzira miyad. Let's say you moved the tefillin off of their proper place with das to put them right back. Says the Mechaber, Tzarech Levarech, you still have to make a new bracha. This is the Mechaber Lishitasai, that if the tefillin, um, if they moved out of their place, even with das, doesn't matter, right? This is, again, this is what we learned in the Mechaber in the beginning of Sifiyot Beis. If you take off your tefillin, even if you take them off with das to put them right back, that das doesn't help. You still have to make a new bracha when you put it back on. So to over here, if you moved your tefillin off of their proper place with das to put it right back on, so let's say somebody was in the middle of davening and he felt the need to be mefiach. He felt that he needs to pass gas. We know you're not allowed to pass gas while you're wearing tefillin. Now sometimes that comes upon you suddenly. You don't have time to take your tefillin off. So we're going to learn in Allah that one thing you could do is quickly move the tefillin off of its proper place. So you're wearing your, your shalyad. I don't have a shalyad, a shalroish. I don't have a shalroish handy, so my mouse is going to stand in. You, you have your shalroish up here. You feed the need to be mefiach. Right away, you could just take it and, and move it aside. So now it's as if you're not wearing it, right? And then if you're mefiach, it's not a problem. So let's say you did that. Al das to put it right back. Says the Mechaber, Lishitasai. Das doesn't help. It's very nice that you had das to put it right back, but as soon as you took it off, you stopped being Mekai in the mitzvah, you need a new bracha. According to the Ramah, we're going to see you don't have to make a bracha. Haga, v'yeshayimrim, shaloy levarech. This is the Ramah. The Ramah says you don't have to make a bracha because you had das. V'achinog, v'kran espar le'el, simil chesif yodalv. Says the Mishnah Burah, Ice cotton memvav tsarik lavarich the shita samachaber. If you if the if you moved the tefillin off of their proper place, even if you had das to put it back immediately, it doesn't matter. You need to make a new bracha. The kevin shaziz on mimikayman because once you move them off of their proper place, heavy kamoi shehisi ron legamri. It says if you took them off, so it's very nice you took them off with das to put them right back on. That das doesn't help. You need to make a new bracha according to the mechaber. Ice cotton mem zayin, but the Ramad differs, the Ramad disagrees, and he says, Shaloy levarich, you should not make a bracha. Kevin de Zizan al tas lachzar, since you moved them off of their place with das to put them back. Masha'en came benishpetu me'atzman, this is different than the halacha earlier 
of if they moved by themselves, Amrino the Tech of Shadishpat of the Law Mitzvah. In that case, once they moved off their proper place, if they moved by themselves, the mitzvah is gone. The same Achloikis pertains to a case where somebody took off his tefillin completely, having das to put them back on. The Rama would argue on the Mechaber. The Mechaber would say das doesn't help, and you need a new bracha, and the Rama would say no. There's, there's das that you're going to put it right back on. You don't need a new bracha. Let's say the person did not have das to put the tefillin right back on or to return them to their place immediately. He had in mind only that he's going to do it eventually. Then says to Mishnabura, even if he changed his mind and he put the tefillin immediately back on, Oh, the other way, let's say somebody took off the tefillin and he had in mind that he was going to put them right back on. But then he got delayed and he took his mind off the mitzvah tefillin. Similarly, if somebody took off his tefillin because he needed to use the facilities, he needed to go to the base of the even if he had in mind that he's going to put the tefillin right back on immediately when he comes out of the base like he say, Tzarech levarech l'kulei alma. You must make a, no, a new bracha on the tefillin l'kulei alma. Why? The ha'en rasha lelech behem l'beis ha'kise. Because you're not allowed to walk into a beis ha'kise wearing tefillin. And therefore, if somebody is wearing tefillin and he takes them off to go to a beis ha'kise, we cannot say that the mitzvah continues because while he's in the base of Kisei, he's not allowed to wear tefillin. So that for sure breaks the mitzvah, the itchile, and now the mitzvah is cast, the mitzvah is cast away. Same halacha would apply if somebody takes off his tefillin because of the need to pass gas. Okay, that concludes today's page. Thank you so much for joining me for Lehman Atari. The Schuss of Lehman Atari should be made on the Gals Klai Yisrael. The Rav Hashem should send you shows for us, but also for us, it should look at all those in need. And we should be zerkhed to see the BS Gals Tzedek, but the Harry of the Amen, Amen, be well.